versus Team Impulse. Battle of new versus old in a way. It's pretty unique. And it's going to be a whole bunch of fun either way. Head over to Twitter and share your thoughts on this match. Tweet at LOL Esports with either hashtag DIGWIN or hashtag TIPWIN. We'll count up your votes in just a few minutes, guys. Getting ourselves into the match here. Four and two versus three and three. The ability to challenge the very top of the standings for both of these teams. Yeah, and it's going to be a great game. Like, just the Twisted Fate combined with the Sin Chao jungle. But yeah, here we go. We know they just invested in a gank. So Impulse is just bullying their way in here. This is a collapse, though. Impressive. This is a very real collapse. Nice cleanse by Shao. Shao to get away from the gold card, and it will just be a lost summoner spell. Shifter pops Zulti. In comes Gamsu. They want Shao. Shao. Another stun lands. The cards are there, and the first blood comes through to the top lane. Hecarim rush and impact are around, but not really able to do much. Kiwi Kid's already made his way up the map as well. It's a 2v1 bot lane. Shifter, though. Flash Ghost lands a stun in. Helios getting very low on health. Polarize the nice flash away. Keeps some safe. Rush with the knockup to buy a little bit more time. Gamsu is here. Tries to get a bit of a knockback, but Rush still able to retreat. Kiwi they want to dive. Has the ulti on Alistair. Goes for impact. Big stun's gonna land. Ignite is on and Kiwi Kid just doesn't take any damage here. There's the finish dive. Two more kills in and Dignitas pick up three kills. This is a resilient team, Dignitas. We keep seeing they make misplays in the early game, but then they wait. Yeah. And I do kind of want to touch on the first dragon. It is actually a very sometimes good indicator of winning, but overall, the percentage wins from first dragon actually aren't that high. And the power only kicks in later. So as long as Team Dignitas can get a dragon later, they'd be okay. Nice wow. ultimate, though. Max range lands. Even the javelin, everything hits. The uh, close, if they stay for this, they might just yeah, barely get hit. This could be a team fight. Echo's coming around the flank as well. well ulti comes in from Hecarim. Ulti down, a lot of damage in on everybody. Damage going back and forth, a lot of CC. Helios very low on health, uh, and wow, the flashes just keep him safe. The dive back in, they do pick up Kiwi Kid. Dignitas loses a member. Very aggressive call by Team Dignitas to go back Impact's in. really low, he got hit by the turret. Where, th that's, the a, that's a far ways away. Let's check out the Shifter new home guard hacker. Who's gonna go for it, goes in. Whoa. Impact gets a shield, in comes Shifter, the rocket gets one. Gamsu gets a second, he gets a third. And now Adrian and Xiao Wei Xiao on the run. They're dodging with damage they can. Go oh, a ton of damage comes through, and Shifter picks up the fourth kill, the refight. The way the Hecarim Twisted Fate is supposed to work. If they can disengage the team fights, let the other team overextend, then go in for kills. Adrian, Goodbye. that's another one. The lack of deep wards in this game is creating these opportunities as well. Yeah, looking at this dragon, this is what Team Dignitas is hoping to bounce back with. Impact has his teleport up in the top lane. I still feel like Team Impulse could hold an edge in a 5v5, but they're waiting a long time to go for that dragon. Rush is not in range for the smite, goes over to Helios, but here comes the dive from Gamsu, who's massive. They pick up Adrian Impulse, limping out of too few members, keeping the flash stun. They knock in Xiao Wei Xiao, another kill picked up. The Alistair dies as Impact joins the fray. Some damage from Apollo, but Core JJ is on the hunt. Gets a bit of damage, in back goes oh, Impact. Man. He shuts down one, he nearly gets Helios, and they do. Two more kills on the return. These fights keep going back and forth. Echo turned back time and changed the tides of that fight. He was so late to the battle as well, which some overall misplays there by Team Impulse, an overchase by Team Dignitas, and a nice play by Impact at the end. He should have just been there sooner, though. Well, speaking of overchases, Kiwi Kid not somewhere he needs to be, and another kill goes over to Impact, 2-2-2, two, two, and two, finally scaling up. I feel like they win, but later in the game without a tank line, maybe that ends up changing. That might be what Team Dignitas is banking on right here, because grouping up like this at the Dragon, it looks like Dignitas wants to fight. Gamsu teleporting in with Home Guard. Flank time. On the flank, TF's there as well. They're going to look right for impact. The flash in. Adrian's going to get huge up and destroyed. A bounce house for Team Dignitas. Apollo drops. Three kills picked up so far. Rush locked up as well. Impact can only run alongside Xiao Wei Xiao. Dignitas go 3 0 and get Dragon. The lack of the front line crush. Team Impulse right there. All the squishy targets in a small little ball. The aggression of Team Dignitas. Yeah, the Impact poke from Averis can be pretty substantial if Impact wants to oh. flash in. This is getting a little dicey. Gamsu's very low. Varus gonna have his Q back in a second. Impact goes in. Oh, he's not gonna get the smite, but he will look for Core JJ. The kill's not gonna happen just yet. Helis doing plenty of damage back to him, forcing the flash away. Impact guesses the wrong direction. Oh, no one wants to walk close because they're afraid of getting one shot by Shifter. Well, speaking of getting one shot, Shao Shao takes him out from 30%, and Impact 
is on the chase. I feel like he's fast enough thanks to the Talisman of Ascension from the Jan. A Q comes out. That will be the kill picked up. And Impact gets the kill. So again, Impulse getting some kills on the backside. Grouping up like that is pretty much the worst thing they can do because they allowed Team Dingertoss to combo all their CC. Finally, Goodbye. a side lane pick. Wow. Yeah. That's a split up. push opportunity. Good job. Team Impulse pushes too far. They're daring Impact to teleport in and hoping for a fight. Team Dingertoss, an aggressive Baron call. Well, Impact's gonna go for the teleport, but it'll come in after the Baron already dies. Oh! Rush gets stole to it. deal with Flash. Here comes the fight. Maybe this is the battle that Impulse needed. One kill traded back and forth. Rek'Sai's dead. So is Sin Zhao. Core JJ forced run away. Kiwi Kid very squishy, and they will drop down Impact. Apollo in the pit has to flash back away. Impulse running out, losing one kill, but getting Baron. Push. It's just not going to happen. And with Baron buff, Impulse can feel pretty safe. Gamtu's TPing, though. No home guard this time, but still a flank. Oh, they bought just enough time to stop. Kiwi Kid, Shao Shao, the instant cleanse. Out he goes. Kiwi Kid locks up Apollo. In comes Hecarim, and he's trying to survive in Graves. Will get shut down by Helios. Impact still in the mix, but has to run away. A one for zero in Dignitas' favor. Winning the fights again and again and again. And again, low cooldown on that Twisted Fate all this time. They're going to get at least one. And Adrian Woo! is immediately dropped down. Gamsu is legendary, still 100% kill participation, zero deaths on this Hecarim. Gamsu really showing up. You just can't be split up like that against this team. Shifter will punish you again and again with Twisted Fate. Gamsu will combo, and now they get to chunk down these turrets. Janna is gone. Let's see if they can do any work here. Without Baron minions, it's going to be hard to get a minion wave into a turret. They do have Alistair, though, for a potential dive. Whoa! They've also got Gamsu, and Shao Wei Shao goes down. Apollo's trying to run, but he can't run fast enough. We've got Impact around. Dignitas are inside the base, but they're going to kill off Rush. It's four dead members of TIP, and what else can they even do right now? Kiwi can happily take it to the turret. Going in for the inhibitor as well. What a good fight for Dignitas. Full applause deserved for Team Dignitas right there. They took the game into their own hands to end it this time. Beautiful tanking by Kiwi Kid. Split second decision making after the pick to go for the game, and they get it. And here we go. Five and two. Team Dignitas right now in sole control of third place. Gamsu, the easy MVP of this game. 11, 0, and 10 on Hecarim. Crushing the massive backline of Team Impulse. Yeah. What a good game for Dignitas fans. Versus Counter Logic Gaming. And for CLG, this team was thrown for a loop this week. Checking out on Twitter throughout the game who you think is going to win. So tweet your predictions. Tweet hashtag TDKWin or hashtag CLGWin to at Esports. Let us know who you think is going to be taking this game home. You have to expect CLG, of course, still the heavy favorites, but you never know. In League of Legends, crazy stuff yeah. always happens. You can always have an early game thing go terribly wrong. CLG makes a lot of crazy invades sometimes. I would expect strategically if CLG is just trying to come away with the win. And, well, this one's not going to be a farm, though, after he's just thrown in and gets a great pull prize in the head, but Smoothie's got nowhere to go. TP comes in a bit late from Sarah, but maybe in time after all. They look for double if the flashless AD carry. First blood to lap it. Aphromoo goes down too. TDK 2-0. Interesting choice of gank paths as well by X Smithy. We've talked about how CLG could this be Seraph's greatest revenge on CLG? It's true. Defeating them with a squad full of subs. Seraph finally gets to play a carry top laner. He does a whole lot better. This time around with TDK. Aggression once again doubles now for doing plenty of damage on the lap man, but careful because the flash knockup's gonna land and they get another kill on the double if lap man trying to run away from Afro. Looks like he will do so safely. Meanwhile, a top lane kill did come through. Seraph was picked off by X Smithy and Kev's forced to run away. So a bit of a kill drop. Um, Afro was out of mana. No? Yeah, they cut it out right. Good job. Three kills now on to Corky, so double if. Yes. And again, Zion and Smithy trying to punish Sarah. He does have flash. He is very far over center, though. Burns the flash, but I don't even know why he bothered. There's no way he gets out of this one unless something crazy actually happens. He's trying to run. Yeah, there's the explosive cast. He wanted to give it to Zion. It wasn't going to happen. Kill goes through, but Man Cloud managed to push down the mid lane, gets the first turret kill of the game, and he's setting up pressure. Ooh, on to Paul Belter, too! Oh my god, that was quite awesome. They're gonna just blow that poor Kog'Maw up. The mechanics were perfectly executed there, and TDK really coming out well. As a whole, 
Uh, this is a game that they should have been able to control from the beginning with team coordination, but they simply have not been doing that. So now it's all about whether or not they can adjust mid-game and make a comeback. Zion getting dough. And Zion's not very tanky, but he's got a Kog'Maw now to help, and Smoothie Mega cut out. He misses the Anchor Smash, and that means Pobelter gets the kill off the missed skill shot. CLG with a better room to move around. CLG is waiting for Pobelter to get stronger and stronger, and they're almost daring TDK to beat them. But if Seraph comes out to play, and he did, but the Hexbringer shield already popped, and that means the kill goes to Zion, Spartan, Seraph. Unable to deal enough damage, but Mancloud now on the chase, plus the stun smoothie flashed for it. That will be the kill coming through to Mancloud, so one for one, but it gives CLG some time to move. They've already got double push in the bottom lane. Is they just stall them out, because TDK hasn't shown the coordination to actually win a game. Well, coordination, the Lightman goes in by himself, looking for Pobo to the flash, the Seraph shield comes in, forcing Pobo to flash away, but... Oh, uh, the Max Reed Jeep Legend will not get the kill, so a lot burned, but Afro is caught out for this one. Who needs uh, organization when you've got chaos and TDK? Take a kill, burn some summoners, and get control over Dragon. It, you think that's going to be Dragon number three. Zion, though, still pushing in the side lane. No teleport for Seraph. Someone has to fully recall. Going to get some nice chips down on that turret, and Zion still has his teleport, so he could maybe try and withstand his Dragon. Falcon, that oh, means you're drawing yourself a Narn. That's a pretty aggressive play by Latman, but it's still giving his time. Team type, ooh, oof. Smithy not having Smite up. The stun lands on him. He's supposed to cast. Buys a lot of time, and Latman going to be an easy kill picked up by Double Lift. And no follow through here. Mancloud also stunned up by Zion Spartan. How about this side of the Chaos coin? And CLG getting a lot of damage dealt. Zion Spartan, though, forced to try to kite away from Mancloud and Seraph. CLG, though, still blue oh. team. Oh, wow. All right. Well, they're in control. Two kills picked up by Counterlogic Gaming. They are actually doing Baron without complete vision control of this. So Kez as Rek'Sai gets very good vision inside that, not to mention the Scrying Orb. Dangerous call by COG. Here's a fight. Afro really low on health, but gets pulled back by Kalista. Zion Spartan is Mega Nar and finds Kez. A lot of damage dealt to this Rek'Sai who flashed the way. Pobelter getting damage to the back line, still looking for someone to kill. Will lock down Kez. Gets another one as he takes out Seraph by himself. Mancloud could only do so much except flash away, and Smithy is here to deal oh. a bunch of damage. TDK Smoothie in the battle with the CLG jungler. That's not going to be enough as Pobelter knocks down more. It's a 5 for 3 in advantage of Counter Logic Gaming. And I was wrong about the Azir. It was actually a Nautilus near the fight. And yeah, this is what I thought would happen. They shut them down while going for the dragon. They needed to force Meganar out, but it didn't happen. So Zion Spartan is still sitting at like, I'm almost, I'm almost, I'm now going to stun your entire team. Smoothie hit up right in the front of everyone. Afro pulled back away, but gets re-engaged and goes for Smoothie. A great knockback kills off Nautilus. Mancloud divides some time with Emperor's Divide, but there's no damage left to deal. Meganar too scary. CLG able to buy enough time and a kill. Yeah. Oh, just coming. Looked like TDK was a little bit disorganized coming into that, but TDK still just hops back onto the Dragon. Kog'Maw is here. They're trying to burst and get out. Dragon 4 now for TDK, 34 minutes in. Aframu doesn't have ulti. He's going a bit far by himself, but stays alive. Kez got nowhere to go. Gets picked off by Double Lift. Oh, oh, with the assist. Zion's flanked. That's a lot of people trapped. Zion's ult is down. Meganar a bit far away. Mancloud summons a turret, and in comes the cow. There's the headbutt. There's the pulverize. Seraph goes down, trades the kill. Equalizer comes in, buys a bit of time, but Zion's part refuses to die. Now, once again, playing the waiting game, and they all are going to find Smoothie with it. Anchor's not going to matter at all. Mancloud getting a bit of poke, but not nearly enough. And Zion Spartan steals the blue with a long-range boomerang as well. Baron control going to be very huge right here. COG forcing in. Seraph was bottom lane without teleport as well. He needs to run up there fast to be able to get to this one. Double of stacking the spears in. Going to try and rend smite combo to defeat Kez. Rumble's here, though. Ooh, Zion Spartan going to go ahead and try to zone away Kez. Push them into the wall. More damage done by CLG. They're going to have Kez come into this one. It's going to be a close fight, but he's not going to pop Rend until he can take it away. And that is Rend. Baron kill for CLG. A couple kills picked up as well. Seraph, they're in the middle of the lineup, getting chunked out by Zion Spartan. Pobelter's firing from afar as well. And now Mancloud on the run. Going to get locked up. Going to get taken down. A three for one in favor of CLG, plus the Baron. Africa for the flash. Pulverize headbutts in. Mancloud just gets ex 
exploded for that one. In comes Afro. A stun in from Smoothie, but will it even matter? They're trying to get some damage to the Pobelter. Latman flashing away. Smithy in his face. And two more kills picked up for Zaya as part of the attack damage focused build. Working pretty cleanly here. Smithy gonna go ahead and get the kill onto Latman thanks to Double Lift. And CLG get a four for zero with the turret dive. CLG not gonna let five dragons be an issue in this game. Trying to end the game before it even spawns. The four for zero fight. Soon to be five. Looks like CLG picks up a win. Seraph will not get anything on the scoreboard for himself. So Counter Logic Gaming in 38 minutes. Plenty of fantasy points on them. 9, 2, and 9 on Pobelter. And this will be the Nexus going down surely and cleanly. CLG 6 and 1 at the knocking down TDK. Yeah, not as clean as you would hope against now an 0-7 Team Dragon Knights. But CLG did recover from some early game hiccups. Double and Aphromo combined started the game 0-4-0, but finished in a much better fashion. X Smithy, also an underrated performance this game, 5-0-9 on Gragas. They become the seventh team to take down Team Dragon Knights. All right, well, two opponents left for TDK in the first half of the split, teammate in Cloud9, so maybe an easier schedule could help TDK find that first win towards the end here, but Counter Logic Gaming able to recover properly from an early game deficit. You can see, just like Dictatos, they're, they're shot calling, they're mid game, they're late game, clearly an asset for these guys. Liquid and Team Solo mid. This is an op. This is an so then positive things on both sides. Then we're going to see how the lanes shape up. Let us know how you think the game is going to go, and let us know who you think's going to win. Tweet hashtag TL win or hashtag TSM win to at LOL Esports over on Twitter. Let us know who you think's going to win this one. Team Liquid with a chance to take control back of first place. Team Solo mid able to put themselves back on the throne as they sit at four and two. They're looking for some wins here. Yeah, and I do want to just keep talking about. Objective lead. It looks like they're going to try and press it here with bottom turret down. Some early work done on this dragon and Callista there to secure it. But honestly, I just got to say, props to Team Liquid here. Their bot lane is winning. They're continuing playing through their bot lane. They've got a rended dragon right now. Oh, that was a clean, nice little play, but Lustboy level 6 is going to get stunned up, engaged upon. Here comes the teleports. TSM going to join the fray first. Quas going to be a little bit later. Lustboy, his ult's going to time out right now, and he's not far away from getting killed. A whiffed Sejuani ult, though, and Quas going to pop the equalizer to buy a little bit more time. TSM are able to run back to the base if they Ooh. want to, but a special flash is in. Lands the two man timbers. He finds the kill on to Wild Turtle. Santorin barely slinks away, but Phoenix is in the mix. But here comes Bjergsen, the savior oh. of TSM. He's going to Flash over his divide, he gets the kill onto Phoenix, but the battle is continuing as Piglet is not done here. Jumped right on top of Dyrus, <laughs> trying to kite away. I don't even know who's supposed to win this fight, but right now it's a one for one. Wow, we waited 12 minutes for that fight, and it was a little bit crazy. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, I thought Turtle maybe would use his flash a bit earlier, no and they thought left. special jump. But Bam. Can they get another? Dyrus gonna hop. Doesn't get the double hop, doesn't matter. Got, got plenty of rent to secure stack. even, if they time it right. There you go, good rent. Dominic though getting locked up. Santorin and Lustboy doing plenty of damage, but Lustboy pops ult. He's not going to get hurt much here. Quas has teleported in. The equalizer Tyrus could be back. very sound. It's special to put a little bit of lockdown, but now he's caught out by himself. The engage not very useful. Wild Turtle gets stunned up. Ooh. In comes Phoenix, but knocked back out by Lustboy. Quas still picks up two, and the battle continues with Santorin, Dyrus, and Bjergsen all just piling down two for two. The terrain that these fights are taking place around. He's the only one with significant damage right now since Turtle's behind and Darius is going tank build. Plus, they went for that move before the dragon spawns, so forcing Bjergsen back. They have control once again for the dragon, almost on cooldown. Team Liquid, another great objective-based aggressive play here. They don't randomly go for these mid lane ganks. Let's see if it pays off, though. Bjergsen's walking his way over right now. Double teleports come in as well. The smite does oh come my. early from Dominate as before, and Santorin gets the dragon pickup. Piglet was not in range to Ren. Now Quas TP's in. Plenty of damage into Bjergsen, but he still goes down for that one. The mid laner will get equalized as Expecial takes the kill credit of four versus four. Dominate chunked low. No ulti for 30 seconds. TSM lost Ren presence on the dragon when Piglet peeled off to the fight, but Dominate stayed on, which made the 50-50 smite worse. So a miscommunication between Dominate and Piglet. And the oh, fight why even be there? Nar goes massive. He's going to pick up maybe one or two, but Piglet has turned it back around, buys time. It's still the one kill for free onto a special. Team Liquid running, running away. Phoenix actually snipes Lustboy on the backside <laughs> of it. So another two for two, but this time Dragon went to Team Solomon.
Sure. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. All right, let's see. Oh, oh Lush Boy misses the headbutt pulverized. Counter now Dominic has a chance to land the stuns, but doesn't go for the tanks. He turns it. No, only hits Lush Boy, though. That's not the target he wanted. Dominic's going to die for that problem. Now, is there going to be a re engage with Team Liquid? They're getting chunked out. Expecial gets dropped by Bjergsen. The fight continues. Quas kills off the TSM mid laner. Loses his life for it. It's a three for one in this fight. Wild Turtle off Whoa! the chase, true to his name, but has to respect Piglet's damage. That is exactly what TSM wanted. As they said, Lush Boy gets the fake face tank, the Sejuani ultimate. He doesn't care at all. Pop his ultimate. He's really true. Turtle did just pick up a Quicksilver for himself, so Turtle one threat that will be able to cleanse. Here comes the forced fight, though. Teleport in. And here we go. Start engage. They stun it special. Bjergsen's yeah. going to go down first. That's a one for zero. Lust Boy, the easy chase. Santorin also in the fire. Double kill somehow for a special. With a bunch of other damage deals on the team, the support handy gets two of them. Wild Turtle forced to run away. He's looking to go back for Baron. The siege. Yep. Oh, they might catch Piglet, though. Grim to flash a good set of harpoons by Quasnik special. He wants in. They look for Santor and they find Lust Boy as well. A whole bunch of burst, but can they get the rest of it done? Dyrus locked up a bit. Dominic gets the kill onto Lust Boy. It's a five versus four. Carl Santorin gonna get hit up, but Bjergsen finds one. Phoenix at the front lines, but look at the damage coming out from everyone at TSM. Piglet's the last man alive out of nowhere. He He's got nothing to do, and the cleanup crew happens. TSM with Whoa. the fight. Lush Boy soaked another giant stun. <laughs> Expecial was only able to find Alistar. And with Bjergsen around the back, he was able to cut him off. Yep, Bjergsen bided his time, did not get caught by any of the major CC. Dyrus got a beautiful Gnar ultimate, and the close from TSM was right there. Maybe they went off that fight. I think they do, chat. 25 seconds on most of the major respawns. They've got a wave right there, thanks to all the pressure TSM already had. And would you believe it, from behind, Team Solo mid will actually do it. They'll knock down Team Liquid. They'll improve to five and two, drag them down with them in TSM. They're gonna end Saturday in second place. What a game that was. 41 minutes right there. TSM only getting the kill lead at the very end. Back and forth from the start. What a fun game. When so much turns on single on a single team fight. So on Gravity versus Teammate, and last week Gravity had a rough game. It's gonna hinder. It's gonna hinder things. So while the teams are loading into the game, head over to Twitter and start sending us your picks. Tweet hashtag GVWin or hashtag TeammateWin to at LOL Esports. We'll tally up those votes throughout the game and figure what you're thinking. I'm thinking here, Alltech Gravity probably going to go on a switch on that vein, see what they can do early, but can Teammate kind of thwart that? It all comes down, shut to, it down. It all comes down to the engages that Teammate decide to go with on that explosive cask there. Gave Keen time. There was a lot of lockups there, the displacement yeah. in the middle of them. He had the opportunity to do so. Bunny Foo Foo, though, gonna take a chunk of damage there. Imagine what happens when this lockup is brought together Dodo. right up against the wall. He's made a black now by Alltech. Here comes the teleport from Hanzo. This is gonna be way too late for Cali Trolls. He's forced to stop sitting on base already. What a play coming in from Gravity after a teammate thought they were the ones trying to make the move. He is not going to hesitate. Nope. It's good pressure from Keen in the mid lanes, allowing him to do this there we a little go. bit more. That's the way you want to do it. Position reverser trying to maybe get to the side of move. He flashes over the wall. Gold the Glue's forced to flash out on that one. He still goes oh. down before Keen hits the ground. And now onto the top lane, there's the Blade of the Rune King on that vein. Now they're going to be doing much damage to her. All tech stays alive easily there, pushing Nian out and already taking down Dodo in the fight with the help. Oh, where are you going? Ooh. That's oh, oh, he's oh. oh, right against the wall. He actually got bumped back with the what did the oh. auto attack would have hit. What? Gets hit oh. out. The ignite comes through for Cali Trolls there, and they actually can't help Alltech. You were saying let's keep an eye on him. He was in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Do they decide to let it go? It's only first dragon. A good fight here would kind of prevent teammate from doing anything else. They are still able to get it though. Move coming in with the steal on that one. Gravity would probably like to get out of this situation. It is, however, the teleport in. Echoes now in the fight. Hauntzer takes down Nian. He then goes oh. over. Golden Glue goes down. Oh, Hauntzer! The wall! The sun was in his eyes and he just can't make it. But he still comes up with a triple kill as he hops over the wall with the help from Bunny Foo Foo. The play is still to be made. Hooked right into the time winder return. <laughs> there. Come out though, once you figure out which way that guy's gonna dodge, uh, every time, maybe every time, you're maybe. gonna hook him no matter what he does.
Baron down to about 8,000 health already. This Team is the fight comp, though. Toe here. This is the fight comp, but can they get over the wall? Only Gragas is going to be the only one rolling himself Kelly over. Wants to Kelly trolls in the gates. Great spot, but he doesn't really do anything with his ultimate. He puts himself outside the fight. That drops Dodo. Lasers are coming back from Golden Glue. But like I said, everything in retreat from Team 8 here from really minute one. For Porpoise, they start going for turrets. Even easier to dive here since they have all the oh, control of the map. Boy. Golden Glue gets hit, hit up actually on the position reverser, which Keen gets bumped out of by Cali Trolls there, but Golden Glue still goes down. Focus on the end now as he's got to dodge the time winder. Oh. That comes back right through Porus' belly and he goes down. Haunter looking to pick up another one, but that's going in for all tech as Cali Trolls doing what he can. The last few swings, but they turn him into glue. And it does not look like they'll be able oh, to stop cute. much. It is going to be Golden Glue on the fountain. Keen's able to get the last seeker and take down the end. He was the last one to live to the ace. So in the ballpark ace right there for uh, <laughs> gravity. What are they doing? He is definitely waiting to make a move. They are taking a heck of a lot of damage at this Baron right now. It's warded, though. Over the wall. He has the ultimate to give the team to disperse if they really need to. They don't know. He's on the other side. Golden Glue is taking all the Baron damage right to his face. Move gets a hit on that, but Keen also throws in a few to make sure he goes down. Or Keen, rather, goes down as Golden Glue as well. What a fight from both Monsters teams here. here. One and the other. Can yeah. they start to drop the priority targets? Oh, he's got Nian flash. Inside, if somebody can get a Seeker onto Baron, that would be huge. Move in a bad spot. Now they're going to be able to drop him down, put him in a coffin. Maybe, no, uses move block to get all the way to safety. And it's still a two for one. Key, or move rather very low. Haunter trying to dive in, gets his parallel convergence in. Teammate doesn't want any of that. A very big back and forth as the base is taking a beating yeah. from teammate right yeah, now. Oh, he's going to cut some more grass? Is this the play? Oh! oh. <laughs> Backs up, doesn't quite cut the grass, but he oh, definitely he cuts in the team. They get in the end. Haunter chops one down. That should also be Dodo going down as the passive comes up on him. Boop, down. Double kill coming in. They leave Cali Trolls to run away galloping. And uh, one, one super minion can pretty much do a third of the, the turret's health as it walks up, being shot by both. So that's been a lot of time for minions to have freely. That kind of mistake hasn't been seen again. This game. Yeah. And See this engage oh. here in the mid. This is TPN. Shh, bloop. <laughs> Juked. Wait, he went back to base. Yeah, that. <laughs> That's an oopsie and a half right there, baby. Uh, so it looks like Hanser did not pass go. Did not, did not collect 300 gold from killing Nian. He didn't collect anything on that. Wow. That was, uh, guys, I'm seeing, I'm calibrating if my alt works. The boy who broke time also broke that engage. Oh, boy. Oh, he has his ult. Can he do it again? Oh, yes, he gets back. Oh, right out of the fat man. That's the Zion. He's coming out as well. Look at the shield. That was going back onto the dark passage as well. What a fight. Altec takes one down. That's going to be Haunter following after. And it looks like Move has good control here, trying to keep the targets peeled. Bunny Fufu -foo on the out. What? Altec is somehow in the middle of the fray. Andra? Around the captain. Oh. I was going to say, around the captain, around the Cali Trolls, but he goes down. The copter takes him out. The base is getting hit. Keen's being mean, and he fires down the Nexus during the entire fight. The last bit of plays, I figure, was just a bunch of mind games from Gravity. They get inside the head of Teammate, and they take him down. I was looking at Haunter's stats. This guy, he's only had one game where he had five deaths. It's the only game that he's had over three. Esports versus Cloud9, and Cloud9 successfully... Nice little pivotal point in his career. Time for some Twitter action. You all know the drill. Send hashtag NME win or hashtag C9 win to at LOLE Sports. You vote it. We count it. We'll put it on the screen so you can be heard. Vote for your favorite team. They are looking for you to root for them here, especially enemy making themselves a name in the LCS. Two and four. Same thing as Cloud9 here as we enter the summer split and we are on to the rip. To LCS season. Hopefully things that can be patched up for a few wins that keeps them out of the no-no zone towards the end of the season. Because only one team gets that spot. And we don't want to be that team. Oh, Flash in from Body Drop. Very, very quiet. Or no, it's almost too quiet. That's going to be Lemonation going down. One last hit on Sneaky. Oh, oh, he has the spell shield up. That only stays up for half a, or a few seconds, rather. To the Dragon, trying to secure their third, because that's their way into this game. They want these fights. Here comes TP from the inside for balls. Ooh, a very slow tree from the bot lane coming in. Can't get the jungler inside. That's definitely going to be trash. He's eyes on body drop. He may go down here. Otters on the back line. Lemonation gets crushed by the hammer into the skies. He gets dunked down. Enemy dropping members right now of Cloud9. I don't think they can continue to finalize any of these kills here, but very good fight there. Only oh. losing body drop on his initiation. Oh, oh duck! Sneaky almost picking up a kill with the boomerang blade there. Flashes in for the kill.
lot of threat on this Baron. Lots of pink wards around it. C9 trying to bait it. And also they know Otter isn't here, so if they get a fight, it's a numbers advantage. So he flashes in this time. That was the Righteous Glory still being down from the last engage, but you can see how much Cloud9 oh. want it. The welcoming carpet coming in over from Flares, but it looks like they want this fight, and they walk on through. Say, where's the food? They take down Body Drop. But they're going to lose the bot lane tier two, and they're going to lose the this. You still have a way back in the game if you're enemy. Cloud9 is really focusing on that vision game right now. Upgraded trinkets everywhere, giving them the idea that they can fight. That equalizer oh. is absolutely beautiful. Three down for Cloud9 already. They cannot get this fight under control. Now on the balls. It's going to be Incarnation once again at full HP, getting himself out of the fight alone as the team falls down around him. That was so beautifully played by Flair's pressure on him. So close. See, this is the point where Meteos gets to throw all the spirits like he wants, the but they're they ready. Go. There they go. That's going to be an incarnation oh, bounce to hold team back. That didn't hit Otter, though. He's got free farm on the free shots on the backside. Cannot take down Balls just yet. Throws off the rocket, and it doesn't hit anybody. And in a bit of miscommunication there, Balls goes down as well as Flares, and nobody really wants to take the rest of the fight with that happening. 3k difference right now. Enemy have so many more advantages than just the mm -hmm. You have to have the intangible oh. show at this point. You have to have the plays and the shot calling from C9 if they want to get back into this. And speaking of plays... Oh, no! Incarnation feels safety under his own turret, but a false sense of security gets him down. The red carpet is laid out, and Balls will be the next one to get charred down. It is going to be enemy running up the mid lane now. The waves aren't where they would really want them to be as it was earlier, but they will have enough here to drop this next turret. Start giving C9 one hell of a game. 35 minutes in. Great job by enemy so far. Yeah, they're just chunking these down. 35 minutes. This is the point in the game where people start getting a cannon minion every wave, but this is where enemy already wants to end the game. Yeah. 10 seconds on Incarnation. That's the ultimate from Sneaky. Lemonation doing what he can. It's going to be Meteos trying to fly to the backside. He says, follow me this way. But Enemy is going to be the next team to take down Cloud9 and bring themselves to three and four on the summer split. Enemy takes down Cloud9. That was a great performance from everybody across the board on Enemy. Really was. Otter, 100% kill participation in that game is Jinx. Flares, 128 CS in 36 minutes.